after removing a cylinder cover piston and now we have to do the cylinder liner calibration that is what we are going to do now so this is the liner calibration tool dial gauge for liner and we have a specific tool for knowing the points where to measure the liner so before that we have to cover the stuffing box area with the help of wooden cover and that cover should be holded with a rope first thing what we need to do is we have to do a marking on four sides of liner that is port starboard forward and aft that is the marking that we need to do before carrying out liner calibration so that is what i am doing now i had done the marking for uh, all the four sides the next thing that we need to do is we have to fix the ladder you cannot enter the liner without uh, the ladder the ladder should be in a good condition and it should not be placed over the wooden plant which is kept for covering the stuffing box area it should be on the top and it has to be rested over the liner and it should be tied the reason why we are tying is it don't fall down but it can slide so to avoid that we are tying the ladder with a rope along with the stud so that is what i am doing now tying the ladder with the help of rope so once that is done the next thing that we need to do is you have to get your uh, measuring tool that means the point uh, indicating tool this is a long scale which have uh, several slots on it and uh, every each and every slot uh, you have to take the measurement and each liner has a different kind of different uh, slot where you need to take the measurement the tool has been fixed on the liner and now i am doing the marking to take the measurement so in that scale you can find uh, slots so as per maker you have to take the measurement on all those slot so you have to put the marking on all the four sides of the liner that is what i am doing now starboard port forward and aft so all the marking should be done with a permanent marker or a paint marker so once you are done with the marking you can remove the tool means you can remove the scale from its place so that is what we are doing now so once uh, that is done the next point that we need to do is we have to go for the measurement of the liner so for this you need two person one person should write down the value whichever you are telling so before using this dial gauge you have to check for the zero calibration that means when you press the needle should come back to zero that indicates the gauge is good working condition so you have to explain uh, the person whom you whom writing the who is writing the value on the table you have to explain where to write and what to write so that is what i am doing now i am explaining fourth engineer to write the values in a correct way so this dial gauge has a wheel in it so all you need to do is you have to just uh, drive it down along with the points so first point i am going to set now yeah when it sets i have to drag the wheel down and i have to keep telling the values whichever i am getting so that uh, 
the engineer who is writing the data will be noting it in his table so that is what i am doing now i am just uh, dragging the dial gauge towards downwards and i have to keep on noting the dial gauge value and keep telling the value to the engineer who is writing the tabular column so you have to take it in two phase in one phase you cannot able to complete because this uh, cylinder liner is a massive cylinder liner it is uh, 92 mc man bmw engine and uh, one slot you can take it by standing on top of the ladder and the second slot you, you have to go down and you can rest on the liner bottom and from the temp entablature you can take the bottom readings so that is what uh, i am doing now so first reading is done so i will go down and stand over the entablature and take the bottom side reading so whenever you are taking reading you have to be familiar of what you are checking and uh, this reading is very important because this determines the condition of liner as i said i am standing over the entablature and i am taking the bottom most reading bottom reading so this is for the port starboard side and next will be for forward and aft you have to take almost uh, eight reading each side total 16 readings you have to take for the liner calibration once you are done the calibration then you have to list out calculate how much wear has been done and then you can specify whether you can use the same liner or liner has to be changed and uh, you can decide later on I means after taking all the values you can decide what to do so now the next is forward and uh, aft the next set of reading i am taking now so this uh, liner calibration part is little bit critical and if you are not familiar with uh, taking or reading the value in dial gauge you have to ensure you have proper understanding of how to take the liner calibration if not uh, the job won't be worthful so after taking the reading you have to enter it in the table so this is the first thing that we need to do calibration of liner which is done already so next thing is uh, inspection of cylinder oil quills this is the quill path first uh, let me clean the quill path with the help of uh, sharp object it can be any sharpened welding rod it will be okay so just uh, clean the quill cylinder quill area and uh, the reason why i clean is just to inspect the cylinder liner surface so once you clean the liner surface then you can use a torch light and have a close look on cylinder liner surface and you can determine the condition of liner whether it is polished or whether it got any kind of uh, damage or any kind of markings you can see this is a cylinder uh, quill path and i clean the slot already now we are uh, doing the inspection on the quills and then we will do the inspection of flow checking in all the from all the quills so just you have to operate the pump uh, manually and check all the cylinder oil quills or uh, pumping oil towards the cylinder if any one of the quill is not uh, performing you then you have to change the quills 
so that check was done next cylinder line and surface check which i am going to do now so whatever you find you have to mark it and name it and take a photograph of it and you have to make a report on the cylinder liner conditioning report form so that is what i am doing now if you find any mirror polishing if you find any kind of uh, abrasive mark all these things you have to check properly inspect properly take photograph so that uh, when where when you take any measures the next uh, cylinder liner inspection you can compare the condition so that is what uh, i'm doing now the marking area whichever i am doing with the help of marking is just to indicate what is that some area of the liner surface looks like uh, polished polish finish and some have a uh, abrasive uh, abrasive mark like whatever you see you have to identify and you have to highlight so when it when it comes to a polish mark it can be easily uh, known that it is undergoing some kind of low boil scarcity and uh, you can see this liner is having lot of polish marks and there is uh, so i am taking some photograph of it there is no no indication of hot spots so the liner is pretty good little polish mark is there and uh, the polish mark indicates that uh, the cylinder oil flow will be there and it don't stuck for some time polish always is not good for a liner so you have to improve it by the measures which was given by the maker so that's all so this is how you have to do inspection of cylinder liner when you are whenever you are doing the cylinder liner inspection during decop job so i believe uh, this video must have uh, given you some information about uh, how to do cylinder liner calibration and uh, how to do the marking how to check quills how to check the cylinder liner surface and uh, you must have got some idea about it if you have any doubt please put in comment box definitely i will reply you if not uh, you can whatsapp me thanks for watching keep supporting thank you all